Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Ismail Noor from Altruistic Leadership Center, Kuala Lumpur. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, thank you very much to the speakers for a very analytical and, uh, approach towards the subject. I would like permission to speak as a community leader. This stereotyping and so-called demonization uh, of uh, uh, between Sunnis and Shiites, I think in my personal experience as a senior citizen going uh, throughout uh, Malaysia, visiting uh, people and so on, I, I do that when I give talks and so on. I don't feel this sensitivity, this seriousness, this schism between uh, Sunnis and uh, Shiites. I feel that there's more talk between the prevalent, what you call, stance and Wahhabism. A lot of talk is between, is about Wahhabism in the mosque, in the musallas, in surahs, but very little with, uh, about, about the Shiites. I think it's more elitist, you know, when I go to UIA, for instance, they talk about it. When I go to ISTEC, they talk about it. Uh, when I talk to the, you know, uh, forums like this, I hear this. But I don't feel this, this demonization at that level of the community uh, of common people. But I, I still feel this, this need to come to this, uh, what the professor said about this practical Professor Crow talked about this practical accommodation and how do we how we do we avoid or overcome this this impasse you know what do we do f for me myself you know as a community leader to overcome this talk about uh, you know the differences that separates us rather than that unify us and I'm I'm, I'm happy that uh, Dr. Haida Bagir talked about you know the common things you know the Quran, the, the, the Prophet, uh, the Hajj, and so on. And these are the things that uh, we need to focus on. But what do we do at little talks and forums where organizers allow discussions and debate to happen uh, without control? Uh, and that becomes a problem. You know, uh, the way I would approach it is the organizers should be mindful of this. The, the people who moderate discussions or the chairman should be mindful of this and not allow the discussion to drift into something that becomes polemic or emotional. But uh, seriously, uh, coming to my first point, I don't feel this, this demonization at the common level, at the people-to-people at the -people level. So perhaps uh, we should not treat it as, as something that serious in Malaysia. Thank you. Uh, my name is Harun I have always believed that uh, the discussion of this nature, uh, talking about uh, sectarianism, is very, very dangerous. If we don't use um, a more practical and cautious approach uh, to the issue. Uh, when I received this uh, invitation for this discussion, I was like, I didn't know it would go this way, because I think that uh, sectarianism is beyond uh, Sunni and uh, the Shah. Uh, a case of uh, this nature, talking about uh, the child and the student, I see it as, uh, as a student, I see it as uh, two people, the, the accused and the accuser. So uh, if, if you want to go between the two, and you said, okay, forget about your case, you are talking about talking to the accuser, and you told the accused, forget about whatever he says, you are friends, you are from the same family, so go on, leave it together. To me, it's like you are postponing the fight. What Islam teaches us in Surah al is that the uh, not that uh, Allah says um, the two people are in two groups of people are fighting. You as a mediator will not say, forget about your case, you are brothers, forget about your case, you are from the same father, forget about your case. You are from the same husband. You have to listen to both of them. What is your case? Why are you accusing? What are you accusing of? Then you come to stand up. Okay, from what you say, you are wrong. You are right. It's this evidence. And after that, remember what brings you together, like Dr. Hyde said. That will be the last solution. 
But the first solution is to listen to their points. If you don't listen to them, the fight will keep on. So that is what I see about this case. A very uh, good example to end my note here is that the beginning of the problem, that look at what is the beginning of the problem, like Dr. Haidar said, the beginning of the problem has more to do with ideology. Then, from that end, the political end comes in or came in. From that end, the regional power control came in. From that end, then the, the uh, tussle over global control came in. But it started with ideological problem. And what is that ideological problem? This is what happened. They accused, some people accused the Prophet Salah that uh, they accused Prophet um, Jubril and Islam. They accused Jubril that Jubril did not know what Allah sent him or he mistakenly gave the message to somebody else. After that, they accused uh, uh, the, the Sahaba from Abu Bakri to Umar to Uthman and then Brian and Churchill. <laughs> Can you just get straight to the point? Please? Okay, my point here is that a conference of this nature should first of all look at the genesis of the problem. And two, after talking about the genesis of the problem, you look at different approaches from both angles. This accuser, the accuser, these are the points of the accuser. They will look at the points of the accused. And thirdly, we talk about meditation between the two points. And that will be the last one. And what is that meditation? Okay, in as much as these are your points, this is supposed to be the stand of the truth. And because you are from the same route, that will solve the problem by just talking from one side of the issue. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah to my brothers and sisters. Uh, I am from uh, Bangladesh. I'm Samabub Alam. So I'm all the way come from Dhaka to attend these programs. So I would like to uh, thank to the organizer. But Islam without the sec uh, sectarianism, I would have the one um, questions to the all. Recently, that means there is the one uh, controversial crime tribunal held in Bangladesh. There is a, actually there is a, uh, no sectarianism, 90% is the Sunni Muslims, including the government itself and the opposition, whatever it is. So that controversial um, war crime tribunal, they put across and uh, killing the so many people, uh, nearly 138 uh, people since killing last one week. So we would like to just make one question to that, so what we can do as is to the, in the Islam world, even there is a Middle East, there is a, a, some uh, a group like the Shia and Sunnis, but in Bangladesh there is no. Only the um, Sunnis are 90%, but what we have to be supporting this or not supporting this as the controversial, the warm crime tribunal is going on. So we would like the bigger questions to this, our, this our moderators and everything. Thank you so much. Um, may, may I proceed? When you talk about um, supporting, supporting... No, that means uh, actually the, in uh, our government also Muslim and opposition also Muslims. So majority is the Muslims. But government make a role play that means uh, the international crime tribunal means must be the, the tribunal should be accommodated with the International uh, lawyers and internationals, all the the bodies have to be attended together to do the war crime tribunals. They do the war crime tribunals. Those who are not li uh, likings to them, they make uh, the um, uh, accus accusements to them to just like a, they require what their uh, positiveness. But we wanted that is why we still Islam country, the OICs and everything. There is so many bodies. So the. Uh, uh, just recently, the OIC, the Secretary General, the condemn of these matters, and in Malaysia, the former Prime Minister Tun Mahathir, Mom, uh, Tun Mahathir Mohamad also condemns about that. So I would like to request that means uh, take one attention for about that matter. So what is the your roles as the Muslim brothers countries about the Bangladesh matters? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I think um, I would really like to deal with the, with the first uh, question, um, which is, or the first comment um, concerning demonization of uh, Shiites, where uh, the gentleman said that he did not um, come across much demonization of Shiites. Um, yes and no, I would say. Um, I think demonization of Shiites in Malaysia is not as widespread 
um, simply because the population of Shia is very small. Um, and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, things have not um, reached that level where the population, the Malaysian population has much knowledge and information and interest in, in Shiism. But the process of demonization is taking place. There has been a radio TV, uh, at least one TV program I've seen in which there is demonization of Shiism. Published uh, uh, ad over RTM. Um, and uh, every now and again, there are you know, articles in newspapers, uh, there are talks here and there, uh, um, you know, um, religious, um, what do you call it, uh, uh, programs uh, at mosques, where there's some demonization going on. Um, on a daily basis, Malaysian Shiites, Malay Shiites, second generation Shiites, experience discrimination. This I know, because I've heard from there. Um, so this is taking place. There's a trial, an ongoing trial, um, uh, against, uh, in other words, Malay Shiites have been prosecuted. Um, so this is taking place in Malay, Malaysian society. You know, and I think it's, it's not at the level that it has taken place in Indonesia or other countries, but it is taking place, and we need to guard against it. Um, and then we also have, as I mentioned, the legal problem. The legal problem being that um, we simply do not recognize uh, the Jafari school as a legitimate school. And actually it is, uh, uh, it is a uh, reversal of an attitude uh, which, uh, in a, of, of a, a position that the, um, the, the religious authorities took in the 1980s, which does recognize, the, which did recognize the Jafari school as legitimate. That was in the 80s, but that was uh, repealed in, uh, in the 1996 uh, uh, decision. So that's also something very important uh, that we should realize. Um, now, the, the, uh, I think the other issue that was raised is what we can do. Um, now I think talks like this, I think somebody had mentioned talks, seminars. Now these are good because it, you know, it, it educates people, but it reaches only a few people. Um, I think it's important to engage in other kinds of activities uh, which educate people but reach uh, a larger uh, audience and a more uh, you know, uh, varied uh, audience. Uh, I think cultural events are very important. Um, if we consider, you know, the, uh, I mean, if you take, let's say we consider Iran as a representative, as a major representative of, of Shiism. Now, many Sunnis forget that many of the great scholars, Sunni scholars, came from Iran. Uh, Al-Ghazali, who is very important in Sunni uh, tradition. Uh, the Shakespeare of the Muslim world, uh, Jalaluddin Rumi, was from Iran. Even Sina, the was from Iran. And many others are from Iran. Um, that needs to be made known. Uh, I think it's important uh, to understand the connection between the early history of Islam in Southeast Asia and the role of Shiism in that. And the parallels between Shiism and early Malay Islamic beliefs and practices. Um, it is possible to have cultural events you know, relating to music, the reading of uh, poetry, qasida, uh, recitations, and so on, which uh, bring together Shiite and, and Sunni uh, traditions. Um, I think, in fact, I know there are people now working on such events, and, we, and you know, I think more and more Malaysians will uh, be introduced um, to these, uh, will be invited to these events and introduced to the larger Islamic uh, culture, and they will understand that Islam as it exists today is actually a product, a product of the interaction of Sunnism and, uh, and Shiism. Um, I also wanted to, uh, you know, to, to mention that um, people don't often realize that many of the things that Sunnis believe uh, have been criticized by the early Sunni scholars, not by the Shiites. Um, for example, Sunnis often criticize uh, Shiites for condemning uh, one of the major transmitters of Hadith, Abu Huraira. But Sunnis don't realize that many of the early Sunni scholars 
we got it Abu Huraira as unreliable. Uh, and it is in Sunni source that uh, the Khalifa Omar and Abu Huraira lash for fabricating hadith. In Sunni source. Um, and in fact, you can find many Sunni sources that uh, are extremely critical of certain widespread practices of beliefs that Sunnis uh, have. Um, Sunnis also don't realize that uh, some of the uh, you know, major uh, works of Sunnis um, are dear to the, the Shiites. For example, one of the major commenters of the Nahd al you know, the sayings uh, and letters and sermons of uh, uh, Sayyid Ali ibn Talib, uh, was a Sunni scholar, one of the major commenters. But uh, his uh, commentary is widely, not only just respected, but widely read among, uh, among the Shiites. Um, so there are a lot of these things that need to be communicated to people. Um, it is not Shiites that condemn uh, Abu Sufyan and Muawiyah and Yazid. It is the Shia, it is the Sunni historical sources uh, in which we find uh, condemnation of their sincerity and their acts and their uh, attitude toward the Prophet and the, you know, the, uh, the, and, and where it concerns Muawiyah and Yazid, their conduct, their conduct as Khalifa, as, you know, uh, as at best insincere, but at worst extremely brutal. These are Sunni sources, they're not Shia sources. So we as Sunnis need to be, to come become more in touch with our own sources in order to know what is right and what is wrong that happened in, uh, in history. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes, there might be there might not be demonization of the Shiites among the wider public, also in Indonesia, because uh, the majority of population of Indonesia from where I uh, come from are the moderate Sunnis. Uh, for some, they would even be considered as not Muslim Kafa because of the mixture of a local culture within their uh, practice of Islam. Indonesian Muslims are very moderate uh, and that, I, to my opinion, there is no chance uh, of this kind of extreme sectarianism would take root within the culture of Indonesian Muslims. But we need to remember that even if it is only a small number of Muslims, would involve in this kind of uh, sectarianism, the consequences could be very dangerous and disastrous. We remember that, for instance, civil war in Lebanon, for instance, uh, originated actually from this uh, conflicts between small, small groups. But then uh, domestic politics would, in, would be involved in this kind of uh, conflicts between small, small groups and then this could, uh, uh, this could uh, become much bigger and can drag other uh, parties into the conflicts. And we could also uh, take the example of Pakistan president. I'm not an expert in Pakistan, I don't know much about Pakistan, but I'm sure that the majority of the Pakistan would not support the actions uh, that has been committed, the atrocities that has been committed by the Sepahi Sahaba or the other groups that would take uh, the lives of 60-something Shiites in just one uh, blow of a bomb, of suicide bombing, for instance. Um, I'm sure that if they could not succeed in using peaceful means to impose their beliefs, their extreme beliefs on the majority of the Muslims, they would resort to violence. And I'm sure about this. I mentioned that these jihadists who are now in Syria, for instance, are full-blown jihadists. As soon as they think that they have completed their mission in Syria, they will move to 
uh, any other agency in the Muslim world. And now actually, as I mentioned before, we were told that some of them have been here in Malaysia through Sabah and has been in Indonesia through Poso, for instance, through Rasulabsi. So even if it is correct, the observation is correct that actually the demonization of other madhas by this kind of uh, the Stakiri groups are not widespread among the population. Still, we have to be very uh, careful, very watchful of their moves, and we need to uh, to move since very early uh, before this problem becomes big, and uh, and we are caught in a position in which it has spread other uh, politi political powers to be involved in the complex, and it becomes national problem. Uh, this is what I just would like to add.